Sketch your graph of the polynomial below. And here we go. f of x is equal to x minus 2, x plus 1, x plus 4. So check this out. The way we can graph this is we can find this, this is a polynomial function that um, usually in standard form it looks something like this x cubed plus something x squared plus something x plus some number out here. In fact, I actually kind of developed a technique for figuring out at least what that number is. It's a negative 8. So there's going to be a number here and a number here. I don't necessarily know what the, exactly those are, but I know that this is x cubed. I know that one's negative 8. Um, if and in order to get from here to here, I would simply have to foil this out. I would have to foil it out twice, though, because, you know, usually foil is just, you know, first, outers, inner, last. Well, yeah, first, outers, inner, last. But um, this time there's three of those things, so you would actually have to foil that and then foil it again. I'll show you how to do that. But I'm just kind of letting you take a look at it. This right here is called standard form. This right here is called factored form. Now they're both the same thing. Once I figure out these numbers, they'll both be the same thing. And you use each of these different forms for different, um, for, for different uses. They'll, they'll have different properties that they can show you. Now, um, let me show you how to get between standard form and factored form. I think that that would probably be a pretty solid thing. So, are you guys comfortable with foiling? Tell me yes or no. And while you guys are answering that, I'm going to start foiling just these two first two terms right here. So I have first is x squared. That's the first times the first. The outers is plus 1x. The inners is negative 2x, and the last is negative 2. All right. Now, I'm going to combine these like terms in the middle just to simplify this first parentheses up a little bit. So I have x squared minus 1x minus 2 times x plus 4. Now, I have to foil this thing right here. But essentially, it's not necessarily a foiling. It's, the idea behind foiling is you want to make sure every single term meets the other term. So you meet the, have the first meet the first, the first meet the outers, this inners uh, meet each other, and then the last meet each other. Essentially, I had this first guy meet both of these people inside here. This second guy meet both of these people in there. That's what foiling is. Or I guess with three terms, it's kind of like the same idea. I want to make sure I multiply everything through by x, and then I'm going to put a big plus sign in between there, and I'm going to multiply everything through by 4. Because I kind of want to distribute out this whole thing. So if I multiply that through by x, that's pretty easy. You just go x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. Any questions with how I did that? Yes, no? Come on, you guys, chat it up. I want to see it. All right. Now I'm going to put a big plus sign right there. That's the plus sign right here. And I'm going to multiply this thing through by the number 4. So that becomes 4x squared minus 4x minus 8. Now I'm going to combine like terms again. These two are alike, and these two are alike. This is a negative x squared, this is a positive 4x squared. So that leaves you with 3x squared. I still have my x cubed, because that's not, not alike with anything else. I got x cubed, 3x squared, and then I have negative 6x minus 8. So I told you that it was going to have an x cubed, there was probably going to be a number as, as x squared term, there's probably going to be this, and there's probably going to be an 8. Negative 8. Yeah, Sam, I guess I guess this is kind of like the distributive property. Um, 
on steroids. Because usually when we talk about the distributive property sign, you're looking at things like, I don't know, x squared minus x uh, minus 2, and then you put a 4 out here, and then you distribute that 4 in. But in this case, we're distributing this x in and distributing that 4 in. So it kind of explodes to kind of a bigger thing. Now I'll be honest with you, this isn't actually this isn't actually the easiest way to do this problem. I'm just kind of highlighting for you what like I, I'm I'm kind of going through all of the steps so that way you can kind of see what's going on. Can I erase this middle part? I just want this last part right here. Alright. I'm recording this, so you don't really need to. I mean, you can copy this down, but you have this on video if you're worried. I'm just going to get my answer. x cubed plus 3x squared minus 6x minus 8. Now, you know how to... All right, so this right here is in factored form. This right here is in standard form. Now... In standard form, so, so I'm going to argue with you that these are the same thing. And if you don't believe me, just you know, rewind a good five minutes and then you'll see that all I did to get from here to here is I just multiplied everything out. In standard form, we can see that this is a cubic function, right? We can see that that function is a, the, the coefficient of that cubic function is going to be positive. So a normal cubic function looks something like this. So I'm betting that it will probably look something like that. If there were a negative out in front here, my graph in my head at least would be something like this. Like a sweet roller coaster ride going down. Alright? I'm also I also look at the standard form and kind of help me figure out that it's the negative eight. That's kind of a key right there. Um this negative 8 is going to tell me my y-intercept. Now, I realize I erased all of the work, and I, I, I regret doing that now because I just realized that um, there was something I wanted to talk about with that negative 8. Maybe I'll catch it in the next video. But I know that my y-intercept is negative 8. Negative 8 way down here. All right. Now, what I'm going to look to now is actually my factored form because my factored form is really nice. Because factored form will help you find the zeros of the function. What I mean by the zeros is, where does y equal to zero? Or, in this case, f of x, which is the same as y. When does that equal to zero? Well, what's really nice about the zeros of the function is when y is equal to zero, you can kind of get, um, you can kind of solve each term for when it equals to zero. Because if I have, all right, if I have this first term equal to zero, then it doesn't matter what this second and third term is, because they're all being multiplied by each other. So if that first one is zero, I don't care what the second and third is, because it's zero times something times something. Or more appropriately, it's probably zero times something that doesn't matter times something that doesn't matter because I'm multiplying by zero. The whole dang thing's going to be zero anyway. So this tells me that x is equal to 2. I guess the question is, when does this give you zero? Well, when x equals to 2 because 2 minus 2 is equal to zero. Similarly, when x plus 1 equals to zero, as I'm saying, the second thing is equal to zero, so x is equal to negative 1. Also, when x is equal to negative 4. I got these three pieces of information all from setting each of these things equal to 0. So that tells me where this thing crosses, this graph crosses the x-axis. It crosses at positive 2, negative 1, and negative 4. Right here, right here, and right here. I would say that my graph looks something like this. 